Um, I'm giving this presentation with Robert Lazarus. It's a, he's a co-developer from Scotland. He's got uh, about 10 years of systems administration experience in the Linux ISP world in the UK. Uh, in the UK. Um, and he actually designed and deployed the second cloud computing environment uh, of the world. As you may know, uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon's EC cloud was uh, the first cloud, so he made the second cloud. I'm Jasper Capel. I'm a technical consultant with an uh, open source consulting firm in uh, the Netherlands, Stone IT. And we integrate a lot of uh, open source products into one solution uh, for our customer. I'm Red Hat certified, and I've been an active contributor to the Cobbler project for only about uh, half a year. And I've been using it for a little over a year. So compared to a lot of people who stand here, I'm relatively new to uh, contributing to the open source world. And I'm very honored to be standing here before you. OK, why was Cobbler founded? Uh, Cobbler was founded uh, by uh, some people at Red Hat about uh, three years ago to fill the, uh, the gaps in the solutions for systems deployment. Um, there are a lot of good products for monitoring solutions or configuration management, but uh, there are not so many good solutions available for deploying both physical and virtual servers. So you had this one solution for your physical systems. Uh, you usually uh, deploy an image or something uh, with a ghost maybe, and then you had a separate solution for uh, your virtual servers. What are uh, Cobbler's goals? Well, we, want, we uh, really want to make a tool that's very, very easy to use. But while we're doing that, we don't want to give up any flexibility doing so. And the tool's got to be very powerful. It's also got to have uh, as many features as possible. And yeah, the, the real goal here is to create a common deployment tool for uh, all system administrators, or basically everyone who uh, whose job is, or part of whose job is to install systems on a uh, regular basis. So whether that's as a consultant or uh, you're a systems engineer in some big firm, uh, this tool was meant uh, to, to help you do your job. OK, why is Cobbler useful? Well, we're all lazy. At least I am, don't, about, don't know about you. But I want to get my uh, job done with the least amount of effort possible. Well, and re reinstallations, they, they happen on a relatively low frequency. So uh, what you usually do is uh, put a CD-ROM in the system, install the system, and, well, it's Linux. So it's still running at five years, six years, seven years uh, going. But when you're at a company, someone installed a system uh, way back when you uh, didn't even work there. So you have a problem when that system dies or whatever, because you then have to reinstall that system, and you've only got to hope there are specifications for that system available. Different persons uh, each have their different methods of installing uh, their systems. Uh, in my company, we have ten, about 10 technical people, and it's safe to say that each, uh, each one of us got its own standards to deploy new systems. So Cobbler is a great tool to uh, standardize your installations. And while you're standardizing your installations, you're actually also documenting your installations for uh, disaster recovery scenarios. OK, so uh, to be able to, uh, to use Cobbler, we have to define um, how all this information is stored in Cobbler. Um, in Cobbler, we have a few types of objects. One of the most uh, obvious is uh, the distribution. It's, it's the software distribution, so it's, uh, it can be a Fedora or Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS. Um, directly under uh, the distribution in the profile is, in the hierarchy, is the profile. The profile is basically well, you can say we have web servers here, or application servers there, or database servers. And uh, beneath one or more layers of profiles, because you can stack your profiles to more specific needs, uh, is the system. And the system is really that physical or virtual uh, box you're trying to install. Um, to help you manage those systems, we've got 
two additional objects. One is the repository. It gives you the power to uh, mirror uh, remote YUM repositories or Red Hat Network repositories, and the image. Um, image is quite confusing, actually, uh, but I'll get back to that later. Okay, what's a distribution in Cobbler? Um, a distribution is nothing more than a kernel and an installer uh, in its RAM disk. So most, most modern distributions, uh, they've got a, some kind of netboot CD, and what's on that CD is just a kernel and an installer RAM disk. And that installer RAM disk um, knows enough to start the installation. Um, in the distribution, we also have uh, a URL to uh, where the software repository is located. So uh, in the past, that would be an LFS mount of uh, your installation medium. Uh, but in Cobbler, we usually run Cobbler import and point it to our DVD medium or point it to a remote FTP to download the ins uh, entire distribution into Cobbler. Cobbler scans it for, hey, I've got this uh, installer kernel. I've got this RAM disk. I'll just create a new distribution from it. Okay, profiles are our main uh, container object in Cobbler because it uh, gives us the ability to build a hierarchy of, uh, of systems in it. Uh, uh, the profile container is a child to uh, the distribution, so it gets a few values from it, like where's my init RAM disk and such. And it can be a parent to uh, another profile or there can be systems directly underneath it. Uh, the profile also defines the path to the kickstart, and that's really, uh, really useful because the kickstart is, uh, at least within the Red Hat world, the only way to automate, is, uh, automate your installations. Uh, the profiles also provide for property inheritance. So if I uh, define, um, for example, a network gateway for, uh, for web servers to use, and uh, later on, I decide to override it for, say, a few systems, uh, I can do so. Um, that particular uh, example is useful for uh, low balance configurations, for example, where you have uh, one standard gateway, which is your normal router, and then you've got these load balancer machines that act as a router for the web servers. So when you've got property inheritance, uh, you can do really powerful things. Um, on the systems, well, it's obviously a child to the profile, and this object in Cobbler represents one actual system uh, to be deployed. So be it physical or virtual, one system in Cobbler is one system in your environment. So if you want, uh, want another sec of a system, you can clone this system and added the properties of the system and create a new system. But the system uh, contains network information, so you really, really can't have two of the same systems. Although you can, as I previously, ex previously explained, override uh, values inherited from the profiles. So, repositories are not in Cobbler's um, main workflow. They're not created with uh, Cobbler import. Cobbler import is the easy command to get you started on Cobbler. But it defines a package repository. So if I run uh, Cobbler repo add and then I give a URL of um, the URL to Fedora 10, for example, Fedora 10 updates, uh, what I can have Cobbler do is uh, run a repo sync and then it fetches all packages for Fedora 10. So my thousands of systems in Cobbler don't have to uh, go to the internet separately to get those packages. Uh, you can assign uh, repositories to systems. So you can say, I need, my web servers are uh, all right at Enterprise Linux 5, and I need some extra software for it. Luckily, there's uh, extra packages for uh, Enterprise Linux. So the servers who need the, this extra software can have those repositories assigned to them. Well, uh, you can either p uh, point Cobbler to a remote repository or you can have Cobbler mirror, uh, mirror it locally for you with a repo sync. This is 
a bit confusing, actually, because a lot of people ask me if, I, oh, Cobbler can do um, physical machine cloning. Oh, actually, no, it can't, because images in Cobbler are not um, system images or ghost images. They're more like um, floppy images you can add to Cobbler to have your system uh, netboot those images. Um, this is actually very useful. A lot of folks use these uh, images to uh, update their HP ProLiant firmware, for example, without leaving their workstation. So uh, you just assign this um, firmware update disk to, an, uh, to a system. You say to the system, okay, uh, you do a new, uh, a new network boot. We can have Cobbler, if we want to cycle the power of that system to make it happen. And then uh, it boots into the firmware image. When that's done, uh, the Kimler for the, the system reboots, and the normal operating system starts again. Okay, well, Cobbler is not alone. Cobbler is more, lo more like uh, the server utility for this solution. We also have a client utility, which is Cone. It stands for Kickstart Over a Network. And it, re uh, it resides on uh, physical or virtual servers we install or on virtualization servers we use. So I can, um, for example, install Cone on my Xen servers to uh, install new virtual machines. It's also possible to trigger a, a reinstallation of a system from within that system. So I, I just say Cone and then reinstall self, replace self, and then it would download its Inadram disk, update its grub configuration, and then reboot into the installation. So after that process is done, I got a fresh system again. On Xenserv, I would say, uh, Cone, uh, I'd like to uh, have a new virtual machine. Um, please pick uh, that system for me or that profile for me. That profile's got, I've usually got uh, the virtual uh, disk size defined on it, how many virtual CPUs should be assigned, uh, how much memory should be assigned to the server, and Cone will just start off the installation for you. Uh, underneath, that's done through vert install. And one of the, new, the latest features in Color is that we've built a tiny configuration management in it. It's not as powerful as uh, tools like Puppet, but there are a lot of use cases where Puppet for uh, an environment is really overkill. So what we can do here is use uh, Puppet's uh, Cobbler's power uh, for templating these configurations because we've got a templating engine in Cobbler. Um, every kickstart we define uh, is either just a kickstart or we embed uh, Cheetah code in it. Uh, Cheetah is a very powerful templating engine. It's written in Python, so essentially I can just write Python in my kickstarts or in my snippets. Yeah, one back. No, no, one back. One back? Yeah. I skipped a few here. <laughs> the top one is really important. Right now, we have uh, support for CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, SUSE Linux, and Ubuntu. Uh, our, our user base consists of, um, I think, about 95% of Red Hat-style distribution users. So the CentOS, Fedora, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux deployments are really well tested. Um, since last release, uh, support for Debian and Ubuntu was added, but it's fairly new. And although uh, it does work, it's not just yet as powerful feature-wise as the Red Hat deployments. And But we can do a full um, medium import for Debian or Ubuntu now. Um, and for SUSE, we can, uh, we can yeah, basically kickstart installations now. We've also got uh, DNS and DHCP management, which I'll tell you about a bit later. Uh, power management, and that's, um, we're actually using the Red Hat Cluster Suite uh, fencing tools for that. So we can uh, add a power interface to a system and then say, from color, say to that system, um, reboot 
or if that system doesn't respond, actually what happens is we go to the APC power switch or we uh, go to the uh, DRAC interface or to the ILO interface and we say reboot that system. And then optionally reinstall it because obviously the system wasn't behaving like it should be when I have to do this. Okay. One of the most powerful features for Cobbler uh, at my company was uh, that we can use a Python API and uh, XML RPC API. This essentially means that you can do whatever you want with Cobbler. You can script it according to your needs. So it's not actually a standalone, you, you don't have to use it as a standalone tool. You can use it as a framework as well. A uh, few more features in cover authentication, authorization, ACLs. Authentication is pretty obvious, maybe. Um, I can connect Cobbler to my LDAP tree or Kerberos domain. Uh, authorization is um, useful to define which users uh, have access to which objects. So uh, if you've got Cobbler split up, like I've, uh, I've got profiles for my main office, my branch office, and some branch office on the other side of, of the world. And I give my sysadmins uh, in a branch office access to Cobbler. I don't want them to be able to reinstall any servers at my main location. So that's what I can do with authorization. Um, ACLs go even uh, further, because with ACLs I can even uh, define that uh, one certain junior sysadmin can only edit uh, specific properties of a system. So if he likes, he can, for example, change the DNS name, but he cannot touch the IP address configuration because that could create conflicts in my network. These are some of the features we're, uh, we're working on for the next release. The uh, top one is a big one. Uh, we're aiming for a performance enhancement so that Cobra can scale up to about 50,000 systems. Uh, we also plan to do a few API upgrades uh, for spacewalk integration because Cobra is being adopted as the provisioning backend for uh, spacewalk. As some of you may know or may not know, spacewalk is the upstream open source version of Red Hat Satellite Server. Um, we're also adding some features required for Fedora Beaker, uh, which, if I remember correctly, is uh, some sort of uh, test slash uh, QA suite. And we're planning to implement Windows deployment. That's actually really cool. I know it's a big Linux cl of a crowd here, an open source crowd, but the more open source utilities we can use in a, well, mostly hybrid environment, because a lot of companies have these applications and they need to run on Windows. Well, if you can manage those systems from, co from color, in my opinion, that's great. Now, well, we might, might want to add, actually, we do want to add support for a lot more distributions. On my personal wish list are FreeBSD, NetBSD, and so on. Um, we'd like to add some uh, web interface improvements I think we're actually going to submit that project for Google Summer of Code. Uh, support VMware ESX, because we, uh, we can now support Xen, we can support KVM, uh, QEMU, uh, these all work, but the other major virtualization project out there, of course, is VMware ESX server. So we'd like to be able to deploy virtuals to ESX as well. Um, the S390 mainframe support actually has been added last week, so this will move to uh, 1.6 probably. Also, because this is a commu uh, community project, users can just inject any feature they want on the roadmap, and if they submit patches for it or it's a really good idea and we want to do, uh, do it ourselves, we just add it to our uh, roadmap. The Top line here, maybe we should rethink naming our top object in Cobra or distribution because I don't think we can, um, can name FreeBSD or Windows uh, a distribution really, but that's something we have to work out. Okay, a little bit about our development process. We aim to release a major Cobra release that's uh, 
uh, a feature release essentially uh, about every two to three months. Um, we're, we're using an old kernel uh, development scheme. So uh, 1.3 became 1.4 stable. Uh, we're working on 1.5 now, which will become 1.6 in hopefully, say, a month, maybe two months. The roadmap's not really fixed, as I said. So if you've got a really cool feature we need to add, just join the mailing list and send us patches or share your ideas. Because uh, Cobra was meant as a tool uh, to be as feature-rich as possible. So there, I know there are a lot of uh, custom deployment systems around there, like uh, a shop running its own a PHP Kickstart generator, for example. If we, uh, if we can consolidate all these features into Cobbler, we can um, build a really, really flexible, versatile deployment tool. Okay, scripting through the API. This is where, uh, where it really gets fun, because this uh, shows really how flexible cover is. I can really, uh, essentially I can, I can script any frame, anything in Cobbler. Um, uh, at my company, we're using this to integrate this with our uh, main management tool, and uh, we're using the XML RPC to add systems to Cobbler. Uh, to delete systems from, from Cobbler to generate new profiles or whatever. Um, we're f in conjunction with this, we're using Funk to trigger uh, new installations or to trigger um, creating new networks on our virtualization servers and so on. Um, because Cobbler's got a database of its own, it's uh, stored all the systems and profiles and distributions are stored in uh, YAML files. So you can use Cobbler as your uh, configuration management database if you like. On the other end, you don't have to, because I know a lot of people say, I've got a working CMDB already. That's fine. If you write, uh, write the glue, you can just have your current CMDB push the information to Cobbler and then start deploying. So you're basically keeping your management tools and are just adopting Cobbler as your provisioning backend. Okay, this is uh, a small API example. Uh, I hope the code's readable in the back, but this is basically to show how easy it is to um, use the API to do some scripting. So, what we're doing here, uh, first we're importing the XML RPC library, and my own library that can do really neat stuff that I've written. I don't know what, but uh, we define the URI to the Cobbler server. We open a connection using the XML RPC library. Uh, what, we, uh, what we want to do is get the system mysite.site.local, and then for that system, we'd like to generate a kickstart. Um, I've taken this from a small script a colleague of mine wrote to uh, generate a Nagios configuration from a system stored in Cobbler. So uh, uh, in this example, my own library dot do underscore magic would do is uh, look at that generated kickstart, uh, find the partitioning uh, bits in the rendered kickstart, and then create uh, checks for disk space, for example. So I can, in my kickstart, I can see I'm uh, creating a partition for root, I'm creating a partition for slash var, I'm creating a partition for uh, log files, with this function, I can generate uh, Nagios checks for those systems, for example. Okay, this is where uh, Robert Lazarus is gonna take over for the couple of use cases. Good morning, guys. My name, as Jasper mentioned, is Rob Lazurs. Thanks very much for getting up this early in the morning to come see our talk. I'm sure you uh, all had a fun time last night and didn't really need to be up here. But <laughs> So 
I'm here to describe more of the Cobbler use cases. Now, I'm a sysadmin. I'm not a developer like most of you. So I'm here to tell you why Cobbler is useful to you today, why you want to go home and install this and use it in your systems. Now, at the moment today, you're either going to be installing your systems by the old-fashioned method of a CD, putting it in your system, clicking all those buttons going through, or you may have moved on a little bit more, and you've got your HTTP server, where you've got a Fedora mirror, and you've got your own Kickstart file on there, and you've got your own TFTP server. You might even be doing something like managing your repos with mRepo or some other tool. And it feels all automated. You might have a database behind that, and you're thinking, why should I bother using this tool? Well, hopefully this will show you why. So first use case was the first place that I used Cobbler, which was to deploy the systems for the cloud computing farm that I wrote when I was working at the last ISP. Now, in this sort of case, you've got thousands of systems that you may need to be reinstalling daily or even hourly. And they all need to be pretty much the same. You know, you might have a web server class, a database server class, and they all have pretty similar properties. And you need to be able to do this reliably. Also, if you're in the cloud computing environment, you don't want to be doing this yourself. Your customers really want to be the ones doing this. So you want to be able to hand over this entire process to them and know that it will just work every single time. Also, in a cloud computing environment, if you've got thousands and thousands of pieces of hardware like Amazon, like Google, or like big ISPs, you're going to be seeing hardware failure on a regular basis. Now, the statistics we worked at at the last ISPs, we figured for every 100 machines, we should be seeing a failure every single month. And your most ISPs are running on thousands of systems. So that's a lot of failures. You've got to be able to get those systems back up and running very quickly for your customers. It's one of the advantages Cobbler gives you. Also, if you've got a big grid system, so say you're a university like Edinburgh or, or one of the European universities, and you've got this big massive grid, and it's compiling your, uh, your code, doing your nuclear statistics, or whatever else you're doing, you're going to want to tell that build system that, hey, I just lost that piece of hardware there. So you might have Nagios doing that. But when it comes back up, you want to be able to tell that system instantly, hey, I've got it ready. It's installed. Let's get using it. Next slide. Again, going back to my ISP roots, this is one of the most horrible things I've ever been through. I woke up. I'm on call. It's 2 AM, and the entire customer web farm's rooted. So you're talking about, say, 20 systems. Now, back in the days before Cobbler, this meant at 2 AM, I've got to sit there, take down each system. Because most of the web farms working, you don't want to take down the whole thing. So I've got to take down each system individually, reinstall it, sit there whilst the install happens. And I'm not thinking straight there. This isn't going to work well, and errors are going to be made. So with Cobbler now, what I can do is I can write a script with the API. It shuts down the systems. Now, if the systems weren't rooted, we could be using Cone to do a reinstall self or replace self to then just, now what Cone does with that is it puts an entry in the grub menu, reboots the system, and then on that grub menu entry, it has a small bootloader environment which then reinstalls the system. But in this use case, if our systems are rooted, we can't trust them. So Cobbler gives us the power management through the API to shut down the system. And because Cobbler gives you the facility to turn on and off your netbooting for your systems, you can have all of your systems all set up to automatically pixie boot, and they won't reinstall themselves unless you told Cobbler to do this. So with your Cobbler script, you've rebooted your system. It's came back into the install. It started reinstalling automatically according to your profile with all the software, the additional repositories, and everything else you need. Then when it comes back up, because we've got Funk integration, which lets you run remote commands reliably on the systems. If you haven't seen that, I'd suggest you have a look at it. And then Puppet integration to make sure that you're, to ensure that your system's configuration is exactly as it should be for your users or your web farm. That all happens automatically. So what I can do then, as a systems administrator now, rather than back in the old days, I wake up at 2 AM. I notice my web farm's rooted. And instead of having to stay up for eight hours and sit and reinstall systems, I run one script. And I go back to bed knowing that in half an hour, an hour, or however long it's going to take, those systems are going to be reinstalled exactly as they were originally. Their configuration is going to be perfect. And I've lost no sleep. Now, our third use case scenario. This is the one I'm working on now. I work at TomTom. 
And one of the things we do is location tracking based on mobile phone data to give us more accurate traffic statistics. What we need to do there is in every mobile operator, we've got to install a cluster of machines. Now, this sounds perfectly fine. Surely you just fly, rob your sysadmin out to your mobile operator, and he'd install machines. The sad thing is that you end up in scenarios like, like I've got here, where the mobile operator, in our case, is far too paranoid to let Rob, the bearded, long-haired sysadmin, into their facilities. So that's not going to happen. So I've then got complete and utter monkeys who have never seen Linux before in their life got to install systems for me. So what I give them now, instead of giving them a CD with a kickstart, which it might be an error on, they have to figure something out, I give them a portable hard drive to plug into one of the systems in the cluster. It's got the cobbler server up and running. So that system boots off of that hard disk. It's got a cobbler server all set up. Then all they need to do is turn on each single one of those systems. They get installed, configured, and they're ready to go for us. And that monkey never has to touch anything or do anything. And that way, we don't have to worry about the systems being deployed or configured in the wrong ways. Everything just works for us. What this also lets us do is, because we've got the local repository mirrors, we don't need to worry about the bandwidth coming in and out of these sites either. But because Cobbler has a replicate functionality, so what Cobbler lets you do is, you have your central Cobbler server, so in my case, in our office. I can then replicate multiple Cobbler servers from that, so I've got that central configuration management database for all of our mobile operators all over the world. And it holds all of the records on all those systems. And I just replicate that entire system. It's a trivial operation. It takes me about five minutes. And suddenly, I can deploy the entire world's worth of mobile operators very, very privily. It makes systems administration, it makes the installation of these systems absolutely trivial for me. Next slide. No. This is the thing I really love about Cobbler. OK, it makes my life easy at 2 AM, and I lose less sleep. But the great thing I love about Cobbler is it's been really, really easy to get involved. And that's why I love open source software. And this is what I'd now encourage you to do. A year ago, around about the same time Jasper joined the project, I did as well. Um, now, as I said, I'm not a developer like you guys. So I've maybe written a patch or two. But what I was able to do is contribute what I actually needed to the project. And we were able very quickly to get that done with Michael DeHaan, with great coders like Jasper. And suddenly, I've got a product that's usable to me. Now, that's for me, and from a business perspective, the big win for open source software. And what you guys provide to the world, it's fantastic. So come and join us if you're going to use this. We'll listen to all of your requests, feature requests, or if you've got patches for us, and we'll get them in there quickly. It works really well. We're a really open community. I know some open source developers are not. I've had to deal with some recently who they won't accept patches. They're rude. Please, please, if you are an open source developer, be open to your users. Because they're the ones who are using your product. They're the ones that you're actually sitting there doing this for most of the time. And Cobbler has advanced greatly. And now the reason we've got this fast release cycle is because we're such an open community. Thanks very much again for getting up this early morning and listening to us probably along. Um, I seriously appreciate it. Now, do you have any questions? Yes, yeah. Absolutely. So one of the things I've got in TomTom is we all have Linux workstations, because they're all Eclipse and Java developers, yeah? Now, we, work, we don't have a central NFS server with the home directories, because the latency would be far too high. Everything's on the systems. But with the, uh, the authorization uh, and authentication ACLs, I give the developers the ability to reinstall their workstations. The last thing I want them to do is wiping out the home directories. So as soon as the system's installed, I put a parameter in the cobbler to say, use existing partitions. And then there's a little snippet inside the kickstart template, which I couldn't have done before with a traditional standard kickstart and mirror. I'm able to put a little bit of code in there to say, OK, if I've got this parameter against this system, it's to use the existing profiles and not wipe out the home directory of those developers and kill all their code. Because I don't want to have to be restoring backups. Yeah, I've got better things to do in my time, like rebuild. Anything else?
Oh, sorry. Yeah, so if anyone else didn't hear, what our friend here was saying is he got, say, 200 new systems in a day. And again, you've, you've probably got some tech in data center installing those in, and you just want this to all be automated. You don't want him to have to go into Cobbler, add the system, because something will go wrong, yeah? Humans are. We all do. That's why we've got Bugzilla. So what Cobbler allows you to do is register new installs automatically. So they can boot up that system, select the profile for it, so it gets all of your common software, if it's your database server, for example. And then that automatically registers that install within Cobbler. So you don't have to have someone sitting there or even an API or a little script adding all those systems in. It can be done just as the hardware reaches your data center. Sort of, you know, if I was to use a fluffy phrase, that would be just-in-time delivery. That's uh, one possibility, yeah. Um, what I'd like to work on in the next coming, uh, coming few weeks is a uh, bootable CD that reaches your system configuration and then adds that confi uh, figu uh, configuration to Cobbler. Uh, for example, your system uh, MAC addresses. Uh, so you can then edit uh, networking properties of those systems in Cobbler, and then have it reboot into the installation. So I guess the main thing is, as long as you get your systems up and running, you can SSH to it or um, trigger any other remote procedure to get uh, things going again, uh, you're good. Any more questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Great. Sorry? We can do failover. Yep. With the Cobbler replicate command, we can um, have information stored in Cobbler on both systems simultaneously. A replication isn't uh, instant, so I, I would have to do this in my cron tab for now. But Cobbler, the Cobbler server is basically just a Python process. so. If I want to add it to Hadbeats, that's absolutely no problem. And same with DHCP. If you've got two DHCP servers running on your estate, as long as you've not got any range addresses on those, they'll quite happily cooperate. In theory, the protocol says that range addresses should cooperate as well into DHCP servers. In reality, it just doesn't work. Even with the latest release of ISC DHCPD, you will have errors with that. But yeah, if you stick to single systems in there, running two Cobbler servers on your LAN is fine. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so you're saying if I've got, say, a, so actually we've got something we're very similar in our dev environment to this at the moment in, in TomTom. So what we have is a bunch of servers monitored by Nagios, and then we have a Nagios event handler script, which can then do reinstallations. Because we've got Cobbler's API, those reinstallations are simple, easy, and predictable. So I can trust Nagios to take care of those. So say, for instance, our build farm suddenly needs new systems. It, we're, we're running far too hot, and the developers are going to be sitting waiting in desks, waiting on builds happening. I can take over other infrastructure systems or whatever spare pool of hardware I have, and Nagios can then just reinstall those systems. I don't even need to think about it. Again, the great thing about Cobbler is it allows me to be as lazy as possible, which is what a good sysadmin tool should let you do. So yeah, something I, I don't want to talk about too much because I work for TomTom, but something I'm helping the UK ISPs do is do this for the web farms, yeah? So say you've got your 10 systems behind your load balancer, and suddenly one of those customers ends up on national television, newspaper, or whatever, and you need 10 more systems. Now, ISPs have generally got a spare pool of hardware because they like to sell hardware very uh, fast. What Cobbler can let you do with that Nagios event handler is Nagios sees the load on the web farm going up, and presumably, you'll have multiple monitors there for this. Then with that event handler, it can just install new web servers, bring them online instantly. Now, it's not a trivial script, but it, you can see with Cobbler API how it can be done. Yeah? It's not difficult. Any other questions? <laughs> Please do.
Um, this is actually a function that uh, normal Kickstart provides. You could have in the, the pre section of your Kickstart um, a little script that detects your hard, uh, your hard drives and then writes out a partitioning scheme accordingly. So it can see, hey, I've got uh, one normal uh, RAID 1 um, SAS disk, for example, for my operating system. And I've, uh, then I've got these uh, two uh, SSD disks. And I'm going to use uh, those for my VAR partition, for example. So yes, that's possible. Any other questions? OK. Thank you very much.